why do we need city branding? Well, thinking about city branding is Auckland competes in an international market. It competes in a local market and an international market. And so we need to have something which is distinctive, which will attract business, investment, tourism, students. And uh, this comes from developing an integrated branding strategy. The reason that you brand is that you want to have something which is distinctive. And so that is to do with the identity. So you need a distinctive identity. But that's not everything, because the real strength of the brand doesn't come from just its identity. It comes from the meanings which are associated with the identity. So if we're thinking of cities that are doing branding well, well, there's a number of cities in the world which are branding or rebranding, and this is going on. One I'm familiar with is Adelaide, and it's rebranding. And it's moving from what was a very simple identity, which was to do with uh, tourism, to a far broader identity. If we take Auckland, the same thing's going on. We had the brand City of Sales. Well, City of Sales is important, but it's not everything. It is only one story or one meaning. And so when we look at city branding, successful city branding, uh, what you have is a number of stories and a number of meanings. So in order to betray multiple meanings, not one meaning, then you need uh, to have collaboration between what we would say is the different stakeholders or the different interested parties. And so essentially it is mobilizing the community. And so this is not only media, this is the city council, this is the tourism, this is education. There needs to be a communications campaign which is going to engage these different parties. Think of branding as a brand architecture. And so the, what happens with the Auckland City branding, it is part of the broader architecture of branding in New Zealand. So this is our national brand. And then some also some very important ones like tourism, uh, Air New Zealand plays an important role. And so this needs to be coordinated together. So there's a consistency in the stories which are being told. So if we take uh, the national branding, they've moved to the uh, New Zealand story. And so this is really a very broad idea about what New Zealand represents and open places, open attitudes to work and emphasizing this very collaborative multicultural society. So this acts as an umbrella for the uh, branding of other entities such as Auckland. Once we talk about meaning and stories, it's not just uh, the agency which is creating the story. The meanings are co-created with the different groups or stakeholders. And so while there can be an element of design in the branding, it can't be controlled. And so this is why the communication, getting the right meanings, the meanings that people in the communities identify with. And this is what becomes very important. So if we look at success in city branding, then we need to look at cities which are doing this really well. And take Copenhagen, that's done it particularly well. You know, it has a very distinctive identity in terms of the mermaid. But uh, when you look at Copenhagen branding, it is much more than that. It is an environmental city. It is a city which has education, tourism, also a lot of innovation and technology. And so all of those things come together. And so when we're looking at the city branding of Auckland, we need to benchmark with some of these outstanding international examples.